Hey guys, welcome back to the workshop. So uh, for the last couple of weeks, I've been uh, crafting pretty hardcore, like 12 hour days back to back just to finish my Mercy cosplay in time for this cosplay competition that's upcoming. And uh, long story short, I finished it and I'll show it to you in its entirety in an upcoming video. But today I wanna shine a spotlight on this, my Mercy Caduceus battle staff that I uh, made for my Mercy cosplay. Now, because of the deadline that I was under, I needed to simplify the design quite a bit, almost embarrassingly so, but um, I decided to take a closer look at the staff with you guys, just to show that you don't need to be an expert in electronics and that making animatronic props that move and do stuff is simpler than you think. So let's take a closer look at how it's made. <laughs> The staff is made out of PVC tubes, some 3D printed components, um, aluminum body panels that I made from sheet metal, as well as some electrical components that I'll cover in a sec. It took me about three days to build and that's including the 3D printing time, uh, but there are some minor flaws that I'm not too happy about and under normal circumstances, Zibarta's quality assurance department would have not let this slip, but um, since I was under such a tight deadline, I had to make some exceptions. Like here, for example, there's a seam that I could have avoided altogether if I made this part a tiny bit taller. To maintain proportions, I sketched out a one-to-one -one sketch and sort of approximated how large the handle should be. The only reference material I have for this entire project is this one sketch, so it took a few tries. I am a complete Fusion 360 noob, but I tried my best and here's how the 3D model for the staff looks like. The metal body panels are glued on so I can't really disassemble them, but hopefully you can see how this thing is put together. Most of the components are self-explanatory, they're hollow so the PVC tube can just slide in and out for easy disassembly. I did glue some pieces, but for the most part, the components are held together by friction alone, including the motor. So let's take a closer look at it. I'll begin with taking it apart. So this is the motor module. It consists of a battery holder, the motor with its gearbox, as well as a connector for the trigger. So Mercy staff rotates quite slow and it's a bit of a problem. I only had a 12 volt 60 RPM motor in stock and that's way too fast. So I needed to do something to make it work still cause there was no time to buy anything new. So I just tried to power the 12 volt motor with a 3 volt battery and surprisingly it was spot on. Using 4 times lower voltage made it slow enough visually and luckily there was still enough torque to move the head of the staff. I think it's because it was running through a gearbox. This wire just runs to a simple dumb limit switch that I slid into the cavity here. I put it into this muzzle loader thing to keep it oriented proper in the handle. These little connectors make it easier to disassemble the staff or to swap batteries, but they're not necessary, so you see, the electronics here are super primitive. Initially, I was really inspired by Mr. Volt's Mercy staff build, and I also wanted to add like servos and lights to mine, but sadly I had to cut them out because of time. But if you want to see a really awesome Mercy staff being built, you should check out his video as well. The head is connected to the motor shaft with a simple coupler that fits snugly into the 3D printed part. Now I wasn't sure how the tip of the staff was supposed to look, so I took inspiration from the in-game Mercy staff and made this with a little Overwatch easter egg inside. As for the paint job, I just used some black glossy spray paint and weathered the edges with some rub and buff. Oh, and I painted the red cross with the same paint that I airbrushed the thigh armor with, just to match, you know. Also, as you see, it has three metal wings attached to it. I used the same fasteners like I did in the rest of the costume for consistency. The metal parts took the majority of the time to make and I'm not entirely pleased with them. I wanted to make all the surfaces perfect, but sadly, since aluminum is so soft, I left a few uh, tool marks where uh, I hit it with a hammer a bit too hard. So there are some bumps that are kind of visible when you roll the staff and it reflects the light funny. Um, yeah, sadly, I couldn't fix that. Same thing with the 3D printed parts. If I didn't have to rush so much, I would have taken my time and sanded it better because in certain lights, the layers are still visible. So, of course, up close you can find stuff to nitpick and be not happy about, but from afar it looks pretty cool and uh, I'm happy with the results considering the time that I spent on it. It's fairly simple and took no time to make, but it's still fairly accurate and matches the rest of the costume, so I still count it as a win in my book. 
so yeah, this was my first video for 2021. And uh, what a crazy hell ride was last year, huh? Obvious things aside, you guys really blew up my channel over the last year and I just wanted to say thank you for being curious about my weird projects here in the workshop and following along and uh, it means a lot to me. So um, I hope we can keep the momentum going for 2021 and I actually have some awesome collaborations in store. I hope the plans won't fall through so uh, you'll get to see some awesome new content in quarter, first quarter of 2021. Um, and yeah, thank you for uh, Thank you for sticking around. I'll see you next time and uh, I'll go be awkward somewhere else. <laughs> All right, peace. Mm -hmm.